My name is Jeff. This is my buddy Billy. Hey. Hey. Uh, I've brewed a couple uh, one gallon batches of beer. This is my first five gallon batch. He's never seen it done before, so we're going to attempt to make a video to show you how it's done. Um, today we're brewing a Hefeweizen. I uh, got that from the nice people over there at Revolt Home Brew Supply uh, down here, down the street here in uh, LA. Uh, and so let me walk you through what we've got here in our setup. All right, so the first step is uh, we're going to heat up the water and then we're going to use that to uh, um, make our wort with the grains. So uh, I've got a propane set up here with a stainless steel kettle. Um, but if you're doing smaller gallon, smaller batches, like one gallon, you can do that in like a two, a two gallon uh, stock pot on a stove top. Um, so as long as you've got a heat source and a kettle, uh, the only reason why you got to do a big one, a big uh, setup like this, if you're doing, you know, probably more than two gallons of, of beer. So. All right. So next up, we got our grain. Uh, the guys here at Revolt, obviously, they came in and. Uh, we went in there to their shop and uh, put together the mixture of what we were looking for for a Hefeweizen. Uh, they were nice enough to help us out with a good recipe. So when you go into most homebrew places, they're going to have a crusher there. They'll crush the grain for you. This is about 10 pounds of grain in this bag here. Um, and we'll be getting to that a little bit later. Uh, the next thing you need is um, a pitcher and a spatula to help you get the water into uh, the mash tun, which I'll cover in a minute. Uh, the next thing you need is a thermometer. Uh, most kits come with a thermometer. This is one I bought after the fact. It, it floats and does some other stuff, but uh, any thermometer will work. Uh, you just need to measure the temperature of the water because you're not going to be bringing it uh, to a boil to this stage, so it's kind of important that you know the, what the temperature is. And then this is uh, a mash tun. So, um, when we get to this stage, we'll talk about it a little bit more. Uh, you don't have to do it in a cooler. Uh, my first batch I did, I didn't do it in a cooler. I just kept the uh, temperature pretty consistent on the stove top at 160. Uh, but I'll tell you that using a cooler is a lot easier. Uh, I've gone into Home Depot and bought some attachments um, and kind of modified the cooler a little bit. I put in a false bottom in here to help uh, strain out the grain from the water when it's time to drain it out. Uh, and we'll also be using a bag. But um, if you just have a normal cooler, a smaller cooler, you can buy one of these mesh bags from your homebrew supply store and um, just use the valve that comes with the cooler and it's fine. It'll be good enough. Uh, but sometimes, you know, from what I understand, the weight of, you know, the 10 pounds of grain is a little bit difficult and sometimes it can plug up the hole and so that's why I've got this false bottom in here and all this is is a water heater line that I cut on both ends and pulled the inner tubing out of and so it's hollow and that stainless steel mesh um, will help me filter the grain and keep that separate from the wart when I'm draining it. So that's what you need for this first stage which is just basically at its core making tea out of grain. I'm using Primo. Uh, these big, this is a two and a half gallon. I've got another five, so I'll be, I'll be heating up about seven and a half gallons today. Um, this stuff is uh, treated or, or purified, cleaned with reverse osmosis, so it's not purified, meaning they use chemicals. Uh, this stuff is actually filtered. Um, my wife's done a lot of research, and this Primo water is really, really good. So there's a difference between purified and filtered and filtered is better because they don't add chemicals and the reverse osmosis you know um, gets all the bad stuff out and it's really clean uh, fresh tasting water so you know I would recommend this but we're gonna go ahead and put seven and a half gallons of this in here Okay, so the water is at uh, 165, 166. So by the time we get done uh, scooping the water into the mash tun and then dumping the grain in, we should be about 153. 
and then we're going to go ahead and close the mash tun and uh, let it sit for an hour. So these first couple, you know, scoops full, we're going to get rid of, uh, we're going to get the water in there because it's not going to be safe to dump it in. All right, so we've got our 160, uh, we just checked it's 163 degrees, so we lost a couple degrees in here. I'm using the mess bag just to help me clean it later. So now I'm gonna pour my grain in. As I'm pouring it, I'm gonna stir it, stop and stir it every once in a while. Just to make sure that it's getting thoroughly mixed in with the water. You can already start to smell it. it smells really good. All right. One of the things I should have grabbed before I did this was some clips for the net. But once the grain gets settled, it does smell yummy. Yes. So I got five gallons in here. And we saved two and a half gallons for sparging, uh, which we'll talk about here in about an hour. That comes next. It's as you're draining off this stuff, you're, you use that that last two and a half gallons to rinse the grain bed. out any of those remaining sugars that might still be attached to the, uh, the grain so you can get as much of the sugar water out of here as you can, what, as much of the wort out of here as you can. So. Alright, so our target temperature before we put the lid on here is going to be about 155, 154, somewhere in there. And then by using the cooler, we can literally just walk away from this and come back in an hour. Um, and we might lose a little bit of temp doing that, but that's okay. All right, so uh, we hit our temperature. It's a little warm, probably about 156 right now, but it'll be okay. Um, so I kind of put a rubber band around the grain bag just to keep it together in there. And uh, we're gonna seal this thing up and come back in about an hour and uh, see where we're at. All right, so this is what you get about an hour later. For us, it's an hour and a half because Murphy stepped in and I screwed up my temperature readings earlier and I was looking at the Celsius side and so we, uh, our water was a little cool, it was about 140. Uh, so what we did at the hour mark when we realized that is uh, we went ahead and dumped some boiling water in to bring it up to um, you know, about 157, which is what I thought it was before. Um, and then we let that sit for another 30 minutes just to make sure that we converted all the starch that we could. So Murphy happens, things happen. Um, and uh, it's okay, you just make adjustments. So this isn't exactly an, a perfect science. So um, so what we're gonna do next is, basically we're going to, uh, we're gonna drain a couple pitchers full into the, uh, here, go ahead. Into our pitcher here. And what we're doing is, is we're kind of draining off the first couple it's called a, a Vorloff, and what it does is there's a lot of sediment that settles at the bottom of the cooler, and so by draining some off into the pitcher there, go ahead and lower it all the way down. By draining some off into the pitcher and then dumping it back in on the top of the grain, um, we allow the we allow the grain to kind of filter that water and get rid of some of that cloudiness. So we'll do that a couple times um, until it's running a little clearer. And then from there, we're gonna start draining 
um, the wort into our stock pot here and get it ready for the boil. All right, so now we've ran through a couple passes on the Vorloff. And now we're going to go ahead and start draining into our boil kettle. And we're going to do this kind of slowly. When the grain gets to a certain level, when the water gets to a certain level down in here, then we're going to use the rest of our seven and a half gallons, our clean water, to do what's called sparging. And what that is is we're going to rinse the grain off with clean water and have that come out of here too. And that way we're getting all the sugars that we can possibly get um, out of our uh, out of our grain. The water's draining. Uh, out of the uh, grain here. So I'm going to grab something like a spatula if you want to hold that for me. And what you want to do is you want to take this this warm sparge water here and you want to slowly let's take it more over slowly pour it in so it's not pouring directly on top of it. Go ahead and angle it down a little bit. So it's not pouring directly on top of the grain, because what that'll do is disturb your grain. But all we're doing here is we're just rinsing it with the clean water here. Then we're going to watch that and let it kind of go through the grain. And again, the purpose of this is just to rinse the grain. So looking down in here, I'm seeing clean water that's kind of getting filtered through the grain um, and rinsing that sugar off. And what you also notice is as the water comes out, it's going to be a lot more clear because uh, it's not going to be as dense with the materials from the grains, the sugars and everything. Okay, ready? So we're going to go ahead and let that drain. If you're doing a smaller batch, you can just take a, a ladle and just kind of slowly ladle it over the top of it. Um, when I do my one gallon batches, I get like a colander um, and I take the brew bag out and I put that in the strainer, the colander, and then I just ladle water through the colander into my boil kettle. So, um, so yeah, it's gonna be a little different if you don't have all this or you're doing a smaller batch. And that basically completes the first step. First step, separating. So pulling the starches from the grains and then um, the heat from the water turns the starches into sugar. Okay, so this is kind of what you end up with at the end. You got some grains that, in the grain bag, you could taste them. Uh, they shouldn't really have any flavor. There shouldn't be any, you know, noticeable flavor. They're kind of bland because hopefully you've kind of sucked all that out of there. So, and then what we've done is now we've got over here in the boil kettle, we've got our wort heating up. We're gonna bring that to a simmer. Um, slash boil, not a hard boil, but just a little, a soft rolling boil. Uh, and then we're going to put our hops in. And then about uh, five minutes uh, till the end of the boil, we're going to put another dose of hops in. And uh, that'll be it. All right, so now we've got it on a rolling boil. You can see some of these bubbles here. Um, that's just going to happen when it starts, but when I put the hops in, what's going to happen is there's, until it gets past what they call the break, it's going to want to boil over. Um, and so when that happens, you just have to really quickly uh, remove it off the heat or lower the heat. Okay, so I'm going to put these in, and then we're just going to watch this for the next five to ten minutes. 
this is the part where most people, when they're doing it in the kitchen, they end up making a huge mess because this thing boils over and they're not paying attention. What are you adding? So we're adding uh, the hops we're using here are Zythos hops. All right, so we're adding one uh, ounce. one ounce of uh, hops here. Just gonna sprinkle them in, and you're gonna see almost pretty quickly. Grab it. It's gonna boil. You're gonna pull it off the heat. Let it calm down a little bit. What's happening here is there's proteins and stuff that are that are boiling their way out of the uh, the wart. And uh, don't let this fool you. It'll sit here like this for a little bit and then something will, will be in there and, and trip it and uh, it'll want to go to town again. So. Um, so anyway, that's what to expect. You just saw how it did that. You can expect it to do that maybe two, three, four times um, until it hits the break. Once it hits the break, it kind of calms down. There isn't as many bubbles and it just kind of sits there and simmers. So um, just be on the lookout for that and watch it very carefully. Um, and even after it's hit the break, watch it carefully because, you know, it's kind of unpredictable. Okay, we're about 10 minutes out from the end of our hour-long boil. Uh, in five minutes, I'm going to put in the last dose of hops, but we've put in our uh, cooling coil. It's made out of copper. Um, basically what this does is hook up to the garden hose and allows us to pump uh, cold water through the wart to chill it. Uh, once we're done with the boil. Um, so our target temperature on this is going to be 85 degrees or less and you want to cool that down as fast as you can. Um, as you can see we've lost a lot of liquid volume in our kettle here, probably about a gallon which is pretty much what we want. So um, this thing should be sitting at probably right about six gallons. The grain probably absorbed a half gallon of water or so. So um, that's pretty much what we want. So the next step, cool down the wart. All right, so while we're waiting for the last couple minutes here, we're gonna take the opportunity to start sanitizing our fermenter. Um, I'm using star sand here. It takes uh, an ounce of star sand for every five gallons. So uh, Billy's gonna fill up the uh, fermenter, the glass fermenter. And I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, an ounce of star sand in. Uh, this stuff only has to sit for a little bit, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll kind of make sure the fermenter is pretty good, and then we're going to go ahead and dump that into a bucket and use that same sanitizer to, uh, to clean up uh, everything else, the spatula and the cap uh, to the fermenter and things like that. So after the boil, anything that comes in contact with the wart must be, must be clean and sanitized or else you run the risk of uh, you know, uh, contaminating it with bacteria. So, um, you know, once it's been boiled and, and sanitized by a boil, you got to make sure everything else is sanitized that, that touches it. Do we, we need again? All right, so we're about five minutes out. I'm going to dump in the last dose of hops here. And uh, we're almost there. All right, so we've got our water flowing from the garden hose into here. If you're doing a small batch, you can fill your sink up with ice and then just set your boil kettle right there in the sink on top of the ice. It'll, it'll cool it down pretty good for you. Uh, we've got our floating thermometer in there so we can monitor the temperature. And uh, just as I said before, from once you stop the boil or about you know five to 10 minutes before the boil ends, um, from that point, everything that needs to touch it um, either needs to be submerged like the coil was to where the boil can sanitize it um, or it needs to be sanitized. So uh, I got the water coming out here and going into the grass so we're not wasting it here. Um, and we're kind of flowing the water at a rate where it's moving slow enough through there to pick up heat. So, um, And then back here we've got our fermenter about half full of sanitizer and we're slowly transferring that into the bucket. Uh, to sanitize our tools. The star sand stuff, it only needs to sit on, you know, the, the stuff it sanitizes for like 30 seconds. So um, eventually we'll drain this down to like just a little bit 
and then we'll just slosh it around right before we're ready to transfer the the wart into it. Um, this right here is a uh, like a auto siphon, and I recommend getting one. It basically allows you to pump it like this to get the siphon going, and then you can uh, go ahead and do that um, without having to suck on a tube or do anything crazy. And obviously, you don't want to do that because you'll introduce bacteria into the into the um, tube tubing. So and the beer. Uh, so that's where we're at right now. We're just going to sit here and wait for the wort to cool off. All right, so we just sanitized the fermenter. Just kind of getting rid of some of the bubbles. The uh, Star Sand's food safe and all that, so you don't really have to worry about it too much. Um, so we're going to go ahead and set this back down on the ground. And we've already sanitized our siphon. So that's going to go into the fermenter. And then into the wart. Alright, so the nice thing about these siphons is that basically you pump and it takes a couple to get the siphon going. Once it starts going, you've got a good siphon, and it'll start filling it up. So we've moved inside so uh, we can avoid as much UV rays as we can. Um, as you can see, the beer is coming up through the siphon, this inner tube, and then down into the fermenter. Again, you don't really have to worry about the bubbles because this stuff, the Star Sands food safe. So it's just a um, like a fruit acid, so it's consumable. There's no rinse sanitizers like Star Sand where you don't have to rinse it out, and then there's rinse sanitizers where you do have to rinse it. So uh, again, we've moved inside to get rid of the UV rays and the wind starting to kick up and stuff. UV rays are important when we put the yeast in. So. Uh, and speaking of yeast, we're going to use this White Labs Hefeweizen WLP 300, a uh, little smack pack. So again, everything after this point that touches the beer or touches anything that touches the beer needs to be sanitized. So I'm going to drop this into the sanitizer um, and I already have the scissors in there. Um, so when it comes time to cut this open, everything will be clean. All right, so I'm tipping it just to get the rest of it. You can probably see a little bit of hops in the bottom there floating. Uh, what you didn't just see, what we did is when the fermenter was about half full, I kind of picked it up, you know, dipped my hands in the sanitizer and then picked it up, put my hand over the top of it and shook it around to aerate it. The yeast need oxygen, so it's good to aerate your wort before you put your yeast in. Um, you never aerate it when it's hot, so you never want to try to shake it around when it's still in the boil kettle or when it hasn't cooled off yet, um, because that creates a whole other host of problems with taste and bitterness and all this stuff. So, um, but uh, I'm just going to finish siphoning this in here. All right, so here's our yeast pack. We're going to cut her open. Well, lost a little bit. It's okay. There's still billions of them in here. All right, so the way these look inside, there's like an inner liner and then an outer liner here. All right, so the yeast are inside the inner liner there. All right, so then we're gonna come and try our best to just kind of distribute them in there. And uh, then we're just going to watch it. Tomorrow morning there should be, uh, all these bubbles should be replaced by something called croisin. And it's like a shell that the yeast make on top of the beer to protect them from the oxygen. Um, the next step 
right, next to the last step is to put the cap on. Um, I use a blow-off valve instead of a, uh, a bubbler, an airlock. Um, and so I'll get that all set up and show you, but basically what it looks like is, is a hose is going to go from here down to another container full of uh, sanitizer water. And as the yeast goes to town, they're going to generate carbon uh, dioxide and that's going to come out of this hose and the water in the at the end of the hose is going to keep the air from coming back up the hose but let the gas come out so um, so we'll get that all set up and that'll be the last little section of the video okay so here it is i put it back in the box to reduce the amount of light that's going to hit it i got the hose connected to the top there and it's down in here inside of the water and then again as, the, as that gas starts to be produced by the yeast that's just going to bubble out through this water and uh, the water keeps the uh, external environment air from coming back up into the fermenter. So, and that's how you do it.